Can you guys see that? Can you see that? Does that work? Hang on. There we go. It's got face priority. I don't know what's going on. But this, this means that it is new firmware day at Zygu. The X6100 firmware release, long awaited. <sighs> I think we were told September and then October and now November. But, you know, it's November 3rd, so... It counts. It's not available for download yet, but there are links in the description to go watch all the usual suspects as to where it might be. Take your favorite imaging software. I use DD under Linux or Etcher under uh, Windows or Mac OS. That's the other one, the third one, the only other one left. And there will be links to those in the, well, there'll be links to Etcher in the description down below, but DD comes with every flavor of Linux. It's just already there, it's already built in. Let's get over onto the workbench and get this firmware installed and play with it. Okay, we are plugged into Shure Power and I want to boot up under the old version of the firmware. That is so hard to focus on. System settings, firmware upgrade. Nope, that's not what I wanted. System info, that's what I wanted. All right, so this is the older version of the firmware version 1.1.5 from way, way back in last April. So let's take our new SD card and we're going to put it in the SD card slot on the side over here and we're going to exit here and we're going to exit here and we're going to power off well hold on first off system setting radio setting somewhere in here i have the charger turned off and i need to turn the charger back on there we go and i need to do that because my battery was running low okay now we'll turn it off and firmware time here we come it should automatically boot off of the sd card that we inserted and start applying the firmware right away and it did not. Very interesting. All right, take two. SD card inserted in the slot. Are we going to boot off of it this time? No, not at all. Interesting. Maybe we need to try a new SD card. Let's try that. SD card in. Power up. Could it be? There we go. Feels like progress. Building root FS. Copy and files. Copy and config files, update finish. It's gonna power itself off in three, two, one, zero. And it's powered off. Okay, now we can remove the SD card and turn it back on. And then there's two steps. So we gotta go in and do step number two. All right, that already looks different. So we've got a couple of new features here. RIT, we've got an oscilloscope. We've got some other stuff. All right, system settings. I keep wanting to touch the screen and it's not a touch screen. Firmware settings, and this is 1.16. 22-11-02-001. What an interesting date. So 2022, November 2nd, number, <laughs> number one in a series of 999 firmwares for today. Yuck. Upgrade. And then down here, it's showing you a progress indicator. Fingers crossed, because it ain't moving. There we go. Oh, got excited. Let's quit out of here. Let's exit out of here. And just for grins, I am going to reboot and we need to get an antenna connected. Let's do that. Okay, and here are some quick updates on the firmware itself. We've added some CIV instruction sets. We've added a Bluetooth serial port. Fix the problem that the FC marker on the spectrogram is wrong when the modem is turned on. For example, the CW mode will display two marker lines, but there can only be one. They got the movie quote wrong. Optimize the SD card flashing process, user data, channel data, recording data, configuration data will not be deleted. Nice. I don't have any of that data to share with you, so I can't tell if that's true or not. Added time display area showing local time and UTC time, respectively. Let's take a look at that. So what they're talking about there is right here, we have our local time and our UTC time. Nice. Added RIT, XIT display area, same thing. There is now an RIT display area there. Added time domain graphic display of demodulated signal. So that's that. Let's get to a signal. Let's get a nice zoom in there for you. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's get some noise turned on here. USB. Let's get up to FT8 signals. Okay, so you can see the signals in the waterfall here, and you can see the time domain oscilloscope there. Looks like it's uh, averaged out a little bit because it spiked up big in the beginning and then back down in the end. Nice. Let's, let's go for a voice signal. 
Looks like somebody was talking right during FT8 there for a second. And I've got the waterfall zoomed in. We'll talk about that in a minute. Perfect. Added automatic reference level of waterfall chart, which will be automatically adjusted under strong signal and the signal can be seen more clearly. They did the same thing in the G90 here recently, so I don't know. Corrected the Bluetooth connection algorithm to solve the problem that the interface cannot be started due to Bluetooth and the interface has been waiting in circles. This might be the problem that was happening with the uh, Bluetooth keyboard and mouse disconnecting all the time. Fixed NTP time synchronization problem. Display MAC address in title bar of the Bluetooth Wi-Fi setting menu, which is convenient for users to query. Optimized operation logic of time setting menu. Let's check that out. Time setting. Zoom? Ooh, that's a big zoom. Oh, that looks good. Nice. Time setting, where do we go to set time? Time setting. Okay, so 2022. Oh, that moves fast with the VFO. And I don't even remember what it looked like before because I just never used it. Today is not November 4th. Today is November 3rd. And it is 12. This seems like it works out pretty well. 35. And UTC offset is minus 6. Okay, and I don't think I have Wi-Fi enabled on here. Yeah, it's not enabled on here. Optimized FFT span function changed to 4 blocks, 150, 25, 12.5. I still want it smaller than that. Let's see if they were correct. So it doesn't go in a circle. Okay, so that's a 100K span. 50K span, you can see the yellow bar is getting a little wider. 25K span, 12.5K span. And it doesn't circle around, it bottoms out. Let's go back down. The reason why I like this is for FD8 and for CW, and I went too far. For FT8 and for CW, the signals, you can actually see individual signals in the waterfall. There we go. That looks pretty good. I actually like that. It kind of reminds me of the way it looks on the ICOM ID52. I, I really dig that. That's not bad on that little display. I, I could really get used to that. Now I want this on a full-size base station rig. That's pretty good. Adjust the operation logic of the flat menu. When pressing MF key, select the current item to the quick adjustment tab and return to main window. Flat flat menu. So what they're saying, I believe, you hit radio setting one, and you see how this is AF, FFT, AV? So it's the audio fast Fourier transform average, and I want to change that to AGC me, for instance. I just tap it once with the MFK knob. So I pick something by pushing the MFK button in, which is this button down here in the bottom corner. <laughs> so you can either you can either see my fingers on the screen or you can see the screen. But it is what it is. All right, let's see. Is there a CW signal in here? They're not showing up in the waterfall at all. Interesting. I can see the signals there, but I can't see them coming down in the waterfall. I still like the way that looks. That's still pretty cool looking. So if, if that's what I think it was, then they did the thing. Adjust the operation logic of the flat menu. That's the one we just read. TX power is selected in radio setting one. Press MFK. TX power is added to the... Yep, that's exactly... Hey, I didn't know they were going to do that. FFT spam. Display settings. I don't want spam. Yeah, span. It's a it's a typo. It's supposed to be FFT span. And that's the one that we did before. Optimize baseband AGC algorithm. AGC time constant is more accurate. The noise floor is very small when antenna is not connected except FM mode. Modified algorithm has higher recognition degree for small signals. If you feel that the waterfall chart is too blue, you can appropriately decrease waterfall reference parameter in the disp setting menu. Let's take a look at that. Right, so let's do get out of there. Let's go into display settings. Waterfall reference value, and I'm going to push in the MFK knob, which changes it to the quick menu. Oh, there we go. So that's 10 dBm, and now you can start to see stronger signals in color. Let's switch this over to CW. And let's get into a CW display. Now we're starting to get some CW signals in here. Yeah. 
Nice. Nice. That looks really good for CW. I like that. I think they did quite a lot of good stuff in there. There is a fantastic update to the user experience, the, the waterfall display, the RIT, the built-in oscilloscope. Some really neat looking stuff there. I like the, I wasn't sure I was gonna like the way the waterfall shrunk down to 12.5K on my 7300. I run it at 2.5K and I like the way that looks. Uh, but this actually looks really good at 12.5K. It, it works. It works really well. I, I really like the way that it looks. It's actually pretty easy to, to check out some signals. A lot of the changes that they made are minor improvements, which minor improvements are good because it's hard to screw up minor improvements. And then they added some stuff for uh, wireless Bluetooth cat control. I'll be putting out a video on wireless Bluetooth cat control here fairly soon if I can get it to work. This may or may not have fixed the Bluetooth keyboard issue. I don't know how it worked in the past. I know a lot of people have reported that it was broken. It wasn't broken for me because I didn't use it. So I can't show that it's not broken now because I don't remember what it was like before. I need to check out CW. Morse code has been an issue. There's a trick where you switch iambic A for iambic B and it's supposed to be better. I heard about that on the Discord. Toad's Discord down below, link for that as well. We talk about this X6100 thing all day long and we've been following closely. That's where this news broke for me that the new firmware was out and I was able to get a copy of it and start doing this eval for y'all. Fantastic stuff. Hopefully many more firmware updates to come for this radio. I love this platform and Zygu has been putting out some good stuff lately. We got G90 firmware. We got G106 firmware. We got a brand new G106 radio that didn't exist before. Now we've got X6100 waterfall. They're on the ball. X6100. Now we've got X6100 firmware, not waterfall. They are on the ball. It doesn't rhyme anymore. What rhymes with firmware? They're on the, they're on the mare. They're on the horse. I don't know. Either way, there's a video right up here. I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.